Seven tips to create self-love. That's the topic we're going to cover today here on Self-Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, not your partner. Now, today we want to talk about seven different tips that I can give you in order to help you get towards love and that person you see in the mirror. <laughs> so let's get started. Number one is know thyself. In other words, you need to know what it is you want out of your life. Um, you know, I've talked about purpose. You know, uh, people have made purpose sound like it's this very mystical thing. And for me, I say purpose is very, very clear and simple because every time you ask a person why, no matter what it is you ask, whether it's a car, a home, or they, they like this certain individual, whatever, if you keep asking why, why do you, why do you, why do you, the answer is going to always be the same. And that's because we believe in by having that person, place, or thing, doing, or whatever, but we believe we'll feel better once we actually acquire our, you know, this does occur. So if we believe it's a feeling that we're actually after, then that's really the whole purpose in life is we're actually chasing feeling good. That's really the whole purpose of, of, of the journey. And so by that, I'm saying you have to get clear what you want. That's why I'm saying know thyself. What is it that interests you? For a lot of people, you may have to go back to your childhood because people have told you the things that you dreamed about. That was just that it was a dream and that it would never become a reality. Get your head out of the clouds. Go back to those things. Life is too short to ever have those regrets, those things where you go, I didn't, I, if I had only went after that dream or goal. Even if you say you're too old to do a specific field, what can you do to at least get close around it? Like I've had friends that, you know, wanted to be in the NBA. They either weren't good enough or they um, feel they're too old or whatever, whatever the reason is. The bottom line is, but can you get around the game? Can you find another way? Is it coaching, going to some um, YMCA, YWCA or some kind of, program, boys and girls club, you know, whatever, and get around the sporting events, whatever it is that you actually have interest and in, see if there's something that you can find. But the key is you have to find out and go after what you, and that's why I'm saying, what is it that you desire? Because if not, you're going to allow the world to tell you what you should be doing. And folks, you'll never feel fulfilled in your life and you'll wonder why. And some of you are probably actually experiencing that that you don't, you feel like something's missing and it's because you've lived your life based on what other people have told you where you should go, what you should pursue, what you should become, whether it's a doctor, lawyer, because there's so many people that are in those fields that only did it because they were directed that way by other family and friends and not because they have the passion. And that's something you guys know I've talked about before and that's a whole nother video um, in terms of that. So, but the bottom line is, know thyself, know what it is that drives you, and go after that, and quit letting the world make your decisions for you, because they'll be more than happy to do that. Number two, mental and physical care. The mental care could be just getting some sleep. It could be doing your meditating. Uh, one of the mental things I've talked about is when you get off from uh, work, if you're a person that knows you're in a stressful environment or because something happened, at work where you got stressed out, don't go straight home, especially if there's other, now if, you, if nobody's at your house and you want to run home and sock the pillows and scream and holler, enjoy yourself. But if there's other people on the other end when you get there, that's going to have to deal with you. And it's probably better in all honesty if you're feeling that way for you not to get in your car because we don't need any stressful people out here on the street because that's where you get your road rage from. So some of the road rage. So the key is you probably need to go parking down the street from the job or go sit in your car. If, you know, if everybody's not looking at you and mentally that's going to mess with you or whatever. But the bottom line, that's a part of taking care of you. And then the, the physical part, we already know. We got to take care of ourselves physically. Um, eating better. For me, it's, it's I got to get more water. I, I go through these periods where I drink some and then I may go a few days where I drink maybe a glass of water or 
a day or something and it's like I know that's not good and I need to be putting more I'm not sure in terms of when everybody's telling you like half your body weight and that you should be doing that daily I'm not sure if that's accurate even though they say it's been proven and the only reason I say that is because if you ain't doing nothing and your body is not asking for anything and you're not burning anything because maybe you sat back and relaxed all day slept most of the day or sit in front of your tv um i don't know if drinking eight nine glasses of water is good for you <laughs> for some reason i don't think it does i think it's like everything listen to your body and go accordingly don't become dehydrated but at the same time I don't think forcing that much water down your system is necessary. But anyway, you get to decide that. I'm not here to make that decision for you. I'm just telling you a part of the physical care is 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 do the things that you feel is best for, best for your body. And that means even exercising, riding your bike. In my case, I got a stationary bike, so I ride that, especially with what's going on now. A lot of people don't want to go out and ride. and So fortunately, I do have a stationary. I can sit there and ride that and, and um, listen to my self-meditating at the same time. Two things at one time. So, but anyway, take care of your mental uh, and your physical parts. And then taking care of your needs. That means know the difference between a need and a want, which kind of ties into what we we're just talking about, the, the, the physical. You may need to eat. You want the cake. Does that make sense? And the reason I'm saying you need to know the difference and not just, and, and we already talked about from the physical why you would do it, but you feel better about yourself when you know there's something that you go, I know that's not good for me. And, but I want to do it, but I know it's not good. But you feel good when you talk to yourself out of doing it. And, and that's kind of the pain pleasure principle we've talked about many times before is you have to get better at writing your stories. If there's pleasure, you, you, you find out what drives you. Is it pain or is it pleasure? Because we do everything in life for one or two reasons. So whatever which one is a driving force for you, use that to your advantage. So when you get in these situations where, for example, using, because it's just an easier example, when we say, I'm hungry, but I want that cake, then you, it's easy to talk yourself through it because some people go, well, that stuff is so hard. It's not. You got to use the pain and pleasure to your advantage. And by that, I'm saying you have to be able to write the story in a way that you say it's so pleasurable. The health, my health, being able to breathe, being able to. And you get all of the stories about the pleasure. And then you realize the pain is eating this cake, what it's going to do for me and all the, the stuff that's in that cake and and how it's not good. And if you write enough pain for the cake, folks, it's easy to say no. See, I can do that for anything. And, and I know that. That's why a lot of times I play the mental game with myself and I say, don't go through that example because you won't eat the cake. It's just so I can eat the cake because I know I just talk myself out of it. I'm not saying that's a good thing, a good practice, but I'm just saying if I want a piece of cake, I'll have to actually do the exercise and tell myself, OK, we're not going to sit here and have that conversation because I already know if I have the conversation, I'll talk myself right of it. And it won't even phase me if I talk myself out of it. But I'm like, yeah, today I'm just going to eat some cake. I, I just I'm just in that mood. I have the taste for some ice cream. I'm just going to do it because I already know if you sit there and, and we've all done it. I said, think about it. There are times that your favorite food is in, in front of you and you won't eat it. Because you're, for whatever reason, you've rationalized why you're not going to eat it today. So we all know how to do it. It's just getting conscious when you know it's in your best interest, knowing the need versus the want. And then we want to talk about learning how to say no. That's number four. We have a tendency. I know I'm guilty of it. Sometimes we do things we really don't necessarily want to do, but we don't want to get other people upset. We don't want them to feel bad. We don't want them to think that we don't care. And these are the kind of mental stories we work with ourselves again. But you got to learn how to say no, because if you don't, then people, again, will gladly use up all of your time because you're a person that says yes. So anything they need done, they will call you to get it done. Why? Because they know you will say yes. 
and you got to get better at saying no because the more time you spend doing things as we know the more time you spend doing things you know you probably shouldn't be doing or that you don't feel like doing that's time you're taking away from things that you could be doing where you're taking care of your self-care like we're talking about the mental and the physical and you're doing the things that you want out of your life that's time you're taking away from that so we got to get better at saying no and that doesn't mean say no all the time some people got to get better and learn how to say yes because <laughs> some people they just so it say no about everything and, and of course a lot of times that's the people that are self-absorbed and you guys notice i've always said there's a difference between selfish and self-absorbed selfish is taking care of yourself i don't have a challenge with that Self-absorbed is when you think everybody else's job around you is to also take care of you. Like you're in the center and the world's here to take care of you. That you'll never hear me say and that I don't agree with. This is not about, you know, the world is not the world's job to look after you. That's your job. That's why we're talking about the seven tips for self-care. Because if you wait on other people to do that for you, you could be in for a rude awakening. But at the same time, you can't sit back and expect that that's what the world's going to do because you're going to be in for another rude awakening. So let's talk about that number five, which is attracting the right people. You guys know I've talked about you got to get clear on what you want in relationships, and that's all relationships. You got to get clear what you want so that you will surround yourself with the right people because if you have no clarity, then everyone will be around you and you feel like you're frustrated and talking about I attract the wrong people. I was sharing that with someone. They were... Um, I was because uh, we're talking about the list, you, which you guys have heard me. That's on a different video, um, our podcast, where I talk about you know creating a list, and you know you'll hear that story where people say you got to create a list, you got to get clear. And I tell people the reason I believe in the list is for a different reason. It's not to get clear on the people; it's to get you together. Because once you get clear, when you originally were writing that list, because you're like this, is what I'm looking for in a partner you realize you don't actually qualify for the person that you put down because if one, if you did, they'd already be in your life and that's not a knock. I'm just telling you it is what it is. And, but secondly, it's so that you can start making the adjustments in you so that you can attract that person. In other words, if I'm a person that I'm looking for someone that rides a bike, but I've never, and I haven't ridden my bike in years, then that there's a problem. Does that make sense? So I need to start riding my bike more where people are, not to go catch, but understanding to put myself in the right environment to make that a reality. And the reason I tell people you don't go to catch is because as human beings, we pick up on each other's vibes. Again, I don't get into male, female. They go, it's a women intuition or, you know, it's human beings. We all, we all operate the same way. We all pick up on vibes. And so we can tell if you're there and your only intentions are you're here to catch someone, pick up on someone. And for a lot of people, that's a total turnoff. That's why they say when you go to the gym, if you're not going there to actually work out, you're going there just to catch. People can kind of pick that up. But if you're going to the gym because you enjoy working out, a couple of things happen. One, you're doing something you enjoy doing. And then you put yourself in the position and the environment of attracting someone who also is doing that which you enjoy and the chances of you making that connection become a lot greater okay but that's how you start to attract the right people it's back to like i keep saying get you together first get clear you can get clear on what you're looking for but then you're going to make the adjustments in you and it'll bring the right people into your life it'll also help you see the people that are around you are they the right people and what ends up happening, like I tell people, when you make the adjustments, one of two things are going to happen. People are going to come with you because they like the direction in which you're going. And those that don't will fade away. And you'll just wonder why the people you used to run with, you'd be like, well, what happened? I mean, it's like we, we didn't get in any conflict. We just haven't that happened in the past where there's certain people you don't even know what happened. You don't know. And it's because when we make adjustments in our life, there's certain things maybe you did, like if I was a person, which I don't drink, but if I was a person that drink and I go to the clubs, I go to the bars with the fellas and we hang out and we drink. But if I decide to stop drinking, which means I'm going to stop going to the bar, for me, that would make more sense. But 
Uh, for some people, they'll still go just for the hanging out. And that's cool. That's not good, bad, right, and wrong. But if for me, it's just I just don't want to be in that environment. Well, if that's the only thing I did with those particular, that group, you see how we're going to fade apart? Because the only time we really hung out is because we went to the bar. Because I stopped going to the bar, then we're no longer around each other. And, and there's really no reason for them to call me or me call them because what we had in common no longer exists. Does that make sense? And that's how most of us end up breaking up with most of our relationships is because we just made adjustments. So that's why I said, so you just make the adjustments in you and the people that aren't headed in the direction, they're going to leave because they don't want to be with you because they don't like the direction or they'll make the adjustment because they want to hang out with you. And then we want to live with intention. Intention, it's amazing how, how if you get ready to go over to a friend's house, and you tell yourself, my intent is to go over here and just enjoy them, their company, and have fun. Folks, your chances of having fun and enjoying them goes skyrocket versus you just going, if you don't believe me, try it and you'll watch. It. It's going to be amazing to you when you do it. Just that little adjustment. Where you're saying my intentions are just to go over here. Because now you're not sitting there playing on your phone. You're not sitting there all the other stuff that you would normally do. Because you know why you're there. My intentions are to come over here to hang out with my friend. And to enjoy, enjoy him or her and really have fun. And so that becomes your focus. Right? Remember what we talked about where focus goes, energy flows. So if we stay focused on our intent... All of a sudden, we're laughing, we're cracking jokes with them, and we're really enjoying their company. Why? Because we know why we came there. I mean, I know that sounds crazy because it's like, I mean, but everything that you do in life, you, you, you're going to have an intent. Yes. If you do that, man, you'll watch how your life is just so much more. Just by just that little uh, decision to make an intention on what I intend to get out of this journey. Because then why? Because I'm focused on getting that result. And then the chances of me getting that result becomes that much greater. And then we want to talk about number seven, which is forgive yourself. We are our biggest critic. We ride ourselves harder than anyone else ever will. We know. Now, what I want to give you as we're closing out here is an exercise that I learned from Lisa Nichols. And if those of you never heard from Lisa Nichols, I'm telling you, go listen to her. That's a bad girl. But listen to Lisa Nichols. And um, she did what she called the mirror exercise. And what she tells you to do is for 30 days, and you can do it longer than this. You can do it for the rest of your life if you choose to. But at least for 30 days, because the shift in the mind, what it does, what well, let's just go through it real quick. What it is, is you have... You in front of the mirror and you have the conversation with yourself. You go, what are the seven? I You go and you use your name. Like in this case, I would say Ron. Ron, I am proud of you for. And I have to do seven endings and I have to say my name every time because what you're doing is you're talking to yourself. You're inspiring. You're encouraging yourself. So you go, Ron, I am proud of you for. Ron, I am proud of you for, for completing your videos today. Ron, I am proud. And you go, you get seven of those. So you got three different sevens. That was the first one. The next one is, Ron, I forgive you for. And you got to do seven of those. Ron, I forgive you for. Ron, I forgive you for. You got to do that seven different endings. And then the last one, is the you do seven of these also is, I commit, you go, Ron, I commit to, and Ron, I commit to, Ron, I commit to, and you do that exercise. So do that with the person in the mirror. Man, you get that relationship going, working together. Because again, this is not about looking for, you guys have heard me say before, quit looking for other people to be that inspiration. If they come, that's good. But if they don't show up, what are you going to do? You got to be able to do it on your own. Hopefully they can add to the party, get us even more excited, pumped up. But we got to learn how to be self-driven. 
self-inspired. Because I've used that example too where I've told you guys, I had one of my relatives one time ask me that. He said, can I call you every day? Or you call me and, and inspire me to start my day? And I was like, yeah, I could. But what if something happens to me? Then what are you going to do? He's like, whoa. You got to be able to do it yourself. It's nice if others can pitch in. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having other people to support, to encourage. But remember, we're talking about self-care. You got to do this. So again, that exercise is basically you just sit in front of the mirror and you have the seven I am proud of, Ron, I am proud of, and continue. Seven of the Ron, I forgive you for. Seven of Ron, I commit to. Folks, do that. It's an incredible feeling. The way you feel about yourself is awesome. So anyway, we'll do a brief recap on the seven tips to create self-love. One, know thyself. Get very clear on what it is you actually want out of life. Two is the mental and physical care. Take care of you. Three, know the difference in needs and wants. Four, learn how to say no. And for some of you, learn how to say yes. <laughs> if you know if it fits you or not. Five, let's get good at attracting the right people and surrounding ourselves with the right people. Six, live with intentions. Get very clear. Everything in life, get clear before you even leave home. My intentions are. And then you'll see, because that becomes your focus, the chances of it becoming reality become very, very good. And then the last one, forgive yourself. Practice that conversation, that mirror exercise. And folks, I guarantee you, you do the mirror exercise. That in itself will change so much in your life. You'll get better at saying uh, all the stuff we just talked about. You'll get better at that. You'll take care of your body. You'll take care of your health. You'll do all that stuff. Right. Why? Because those are some of the things, probably the commitment. You'll commit to yourself that we're going to get healthy. And if you keep telling yourself that every day, I commit to being healthy. Ron, I commit to the best shape possible. Ron, I commit. See, if you do that, whether you believe it or not, they tell you most habits takes about 21 days to, 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 to kick in. The reality is, it's impact. They're just saying 21 days, even if you didn't believe it and you keep saying it, in most cases, 21 days, it'll kick in. Impact will cause things to change immediately. In other words, you can go to the doctor who tells you if you smoke another cigarette, you're going to die. Or if you eat certain foods, you're going to die. That's up to you. What's real to you depends on the actions that you take. But if you believe that concept, you can stop immediately. Impact. Impact will make an immediate habit shift. So if it's not an immediate impact, you haven't given it enough power behind it in order for you to make that quick shift, then normally they're saying it takes about 21 days. But that's why the exercise, you do that for 30 because that's way more than enough time for you to make the shift in your beliefs and the way you see yourself. Folks, try that. And I know the self-love, it's right around the corner if you don't already have it. If nothing else, we're going to strengthen it and be able to do like I said, my man, the football player. Every time I think about that, I laugh. He said, I love me some me. Get good at that. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. I look forward to talking to you. For those of you who do the self-love Monday, I'll see you next Monday. And for those of you who we do the uh, Relationship Thursday, I look forward to talking to you on Relationship Thursday. And matter of fact, on that one, I have, uh, I'm going to share uh, some information I got from an old one of my old books. I was just going through it the other day, and he had 20 questions um, as far as to, to, for your relationship. And I'm going to share that with you. So that's probably going to be pretty much the topic. It's kind of those 20 questions and giving my little input on them, but the 20 questions in itself will be, um, a great exercise for you to take down and use. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you later. Take care and enjoy the journey. Bye-bye.